Number 84. The oxidation of the sugar glucose, C6H12O6, is described by the following equation. And then they give us the equation. Looks like it's a combustion, right? C6H12O6 solid plus 6O2 gas yields 6 CO2 gas plus 6 H2O liquid. And there's a delta H for this. So when this process happens, we will release 2,816 kilojoules. Okay. The metabolism of glucose gives the same products, although the glucose reacts with oxygen in a series of steps in the body. So letter A, how much heat in kilojoules can be produced by the metabolism of one gram of glucose? Okie dokie. All right, so it looks like we're starting off with one gram and we wanna find out the heat in kilojoules. So the first things first is I'm just going to write out this equation just so that it's bigger and we can kind of work with it. So we get C6, H12O6, that's a solid, plus O2, and they actually give me the values, plus 6O2, that's a gas, and actually, actually, do I care about the states? Nah, I don't care about the states. So they already gave me a delta H, so I don't have to do that part. So I'm just going to say this plus 6O2 yields 6CO2 plus 6H2O. I already see coefficients, so I'm not going to worry that this is not balanced. And they gave me a delta H value, negative 2816, and that's kilojoules. Okay, so start with what you're given. I have one, so maybe I'll say this is for letter A. I have 1.0 gram of glucose. They did say glucose was C6H12O6. I want to convert this amount of grams into the amount of heat. Now remember guys, the heat value is linked with the coefficients in the front of, the, of all the compounds in the balanced equation. And remember, the coefficients are mole values, right? Every time that we want to use those coefficients, it's always a mole value. So what's the first thing that I have to do? Yeah, I got to get grams into moles. So times by a ratio, throw the gram of C6H12O6 on the bottom, put the mole of C6H12O6 on the top. And remember, we know how to do this, right? Gram to mole conversion of the same compound is the periodic table. And you always have one mole if you're using the periodic table. The mass that you get on the periodic table is the one in grams. So let's see. I got six carbon, so six times 12.01, plus 12 hydrogen, plus six oxygen. So I get roughly 180.156. Okay, cancel out the gram. And now we're at moles. Now we can use this value. This amount, negative 2,816 kilojoules, is per what mole is on the top of what compound you want. So this 2,816 kilojoules of heat is released per every one mole of glucose, per every six moles of O2, per every six CO2s, and per every six H2Os. We specifically want the mole of C6H12O6. So let's just keep going. Write the ratio. Mole of C6H12O6 on the bottom. And I just want the kilojoules. So the number is telling me that for every negative 2,816 kilojoules, right? 2,816 kilojoules that's being released. This is equivalent to, what's the number in front of the C6H12O6? Just a one. So I just put a one down here, cancel these out. And now we come to our destination. So it basically is just 2816 divided by 180.156. So basically you're going to release, the negative is the release, right? 15, and actually this is uh, technically we should have two sig figs because it's 1.0 grams of glucose. So maybe I'll just say 16. It's 15.6, but the six rounds up. So this would be 16 kilojoules. So this just depends on what your teacher or professor wants. How much heat can be produced? 
16 kilojoules can be produced. Remember, there's no such thing as a negative amount of energy. The negative just re references that it's being released. So whether your teacher just wants you to say 16 or whether they just want you to keep it as a negative, you know, teach his own. I'm just going to leave it as a negative 16 kilojoules. All right. So that's the answer for A. Now let's go to B. And actually B I could put over here. So now it says, how many calories can be produced by the metabolism of one gram of glucose? Well, we just learned that for every one gram of glucose, we're going to be able to produce 16 kilocalories, right? So whether you want to put negative 16 or 16 kilojoules, remember the negative just means released. I'm going to put it as 16. Because when we think in terms of calories, we don't think in terms of negative calories. So maybe I'll just say, you know, I'll say 16 kilojoules produced here. It's going to be produced and released. So 16 kJ seems like we just want to go from one unit of energy, the kilojoule, to another unit of energy, which is capital C calorie. I put the link down here for you between capital C calorie and kilojoule. I say capital C because capital C calorie is the same thing as kilocalories. So it's a kcal, okay? So since they gave me a capital C, I know that I'm dealing with kilocalories and one kilocalorie or one capital C calorie equals 4.184 kilojoules. So just another ratio, times other ratio, kilojoules on the bottom. Maybe I'll just put capital cal, right? Capital C cal. And the number is, for every one calorie, it's 4.184 kilojoules. Cancel out the kilojoules. And now we're going to say how many calories are going to be produced. So 16 divided by 4.184 two sig figs, so 3.8. So if you metabolize, if you ingest one gram of glucose and it, it gets metabolized, you're going to be able to produce roughly three calories for, you know, heat energy. All right. That's it, guys. What'd you think? This one was pretty easy. Thank you so much for viewing the video. I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. And as always, I really hope you're having an awesome day. Be well, stay safe, and I will see you all in the next lesson. Take care. Bye-bye.